my name is Dolev and I'm from Vizimix company. In this tutorial, I will show you a new methodology using Vizimix software for the purpose of checking the influence of mixing in your process. We all know the scenario where your manager gives you a new project on a small batch of material that runs smoothly in the lab and then expects you to generate a large batch of material in a short period of time so that you can send it to your customer. It is very difficult to explain to your manager based on your experience that in all likelihood you will encounter a lot of problems when you're scaling up the chemical process. The question is, how can we avoid scale-up problems during the scale-up stages for the new chemical process? Dr. Mixwell is here to provide you with some basic understanding of how you can implement scale-up methodologies using Vizimix to prevent mixing problems and achieve your desired results quickly. In fact, his role is just to emphasize what you may already know. We need to be sure that the key mixed-in parameter does not change during scale-up so that mixing will not disturb the operation control or the quality of your product. Therefore, we have to be sure that mixing is always taken in consideration in our experiments. After we are familiar with the chemical process and the product quantity is defined, it will be possible to calculate what range of mixing operation and conditions are required in the production stage, and after that, we can proceed to evaluate the worst situation with the lab equipment by setting it up according to the mixing calculations. The combination of experimental results and the knowledge of the relevant mixing parameters will guide you to avoid troubles in the production stage. But how will you explain to your boss why there is a need to simulate mixing? Of course, there are other parameters that define a good process, but our first goal is to develop a process that will run properly in the first trial at the new scale or new production site, similar to our successful results in the lab or in the old facility. In order to achieve this, we need to evaluate the process with similar conditions to the production scale. Of course, we will keep fixed the same raw material quality and the same procedure that followed in the lab. So the main parameter we change is not in our control, it is the size or geometry of the available reactor and agitator geometry. In this situation, the hydrodynamic of the system is changing. If we are able to identify and control the key mixing parameters, we will be able to achieve the desired product quality and find an optimal solution. The first stage of the scalar process is to understand the chemistry of the process. In this example, we would like to simulate a competitive parallel reaction. We dissolve in water all the salts, potassium iodide, potassium iodate, and sodium acetate. After that, we drip diluted HCl to the solution in order to generate NaCl and acetic acid. We would like to avoid the appearance of the color in the mixture generated by iodine. Inadequate or bad mixing of the process would create iodine that represents an impurity in the process or some undesirable color in the product. All the salts are dissolved in the reactor and the acid, HCl, is fed as a semi-batch mode. For the second stage of the scalar process, the geometry of the small and large scale reactor will be required. With the reactor geometry and agitation data, we can start to calculate the more important parameters that can affect the influence of the mixing in the selectivity and purity in our reaction scale-up activities. You can see how to operate the Vizimix software in our next video, the Vizimix demo operation. So now, after we modeled all the equipment we need to ask the question which mixing parameters are required to be fixed to succeed at the production scale, we can go to the Vizimix help content section where we can find out which parameters are imported for various unit operations. Concentration deviations and temperature profile can be understood but what is macro mixing time, characteristic time of micro mixing, circulation flow rate? The circulation flow rate parameter is calculated as the sum of circulation flow rates in the all main circulation loops. So in practical terms, if the circulation flow rate represents the flow of every part of the fluid, the mean period of circulation is the average time of a single cycle of media. Circulation is calculated on the basis of circulation flow rate. Those parameters will be significant for the addition of HCl in our project. High concentration of HCl will generate more iodine, so a high mean period of circulation will decrease the selectivity of our process. 
Moreover, the macro mixing time parameter is the required time to get the homogeneity, which is required for the process and product quality. By intuition, the micro mixing time calculates the required time to get homogeneity in the local level. In the reactor, we will have eddies, which are mini tornadoes. The micro mixing time will tell us the time required for this eddy to disappear, and by consequence of this, the time to distribute the material and transfer it. For example, the HCl from one side to other in the reactor. If the micro mixing time is too long, then in our process example, more iodine will be created, decrease the selectivity of the process, and the quality of the material will be poor. In this way, we can understand that if we find the mixing conditions in the lab over the range of mixing conditions in the production size, the results will be similar. We can run the process in the lab at these conditions, and maybe on the first try succeed to run the process at similar conditions we will find in the production size. So now, we will hopefully be able to perform the scale-up for the first time with no surprises. You're invited to see the video reaction scale-up and understand how to set up these lab experiments. In this video, we will learn how to input data into the Vizimix program and get results that will help us to understand the influence of mixing in our process. Whether you are a process chemist, an engineer or a technician, Vizimix works with you at your level of expertise. As input, you need only a set of initial data available from routine sources, the type and dimensions of your mixing system, and the properties of the media. If you don't know the exact values, Vizimix helps you to estimate them. Dr. Mixwell is again with us and will help us during the course of the process. Let's get started. This demo example is based on example number 4 from the Vizimix Turbulent tutorial that you can find in our website. We want to show you through this example how you can operate Vizimix software and get meaningful and representative results for mixing in your steer tank. The example shows you how to use Vizimix for modeling dissolution of solid particles suspended in liquid. You will learn how to calculate the solution time in a given mixing tank. You will evaluate the suitability of this tank for your process and improve your design if required. First, we will create a Vizimix project for your process. Select Project, New, in the main Vizimix menu. Enter a name for the project and save it in any convenient directory. Click OK. The Tank Types menu appears. Click on the diagram of your tank and it will appear in the current choice window on the right. Click OK to confirm your choice. The Tank Input table appears. Now, enter your tank dimensions. Enter inside diameter, total tank height, and level of media. The total volume and volume of media will be calculated by the program and entered automatically. After you click OK, the Buffle Types menu appears. Click on the diagram of your buffle and click OK to confirm your choice. Now, enter the parameters of your buffle in the table that appears. Click OK and the Impeller Types menu appears. Select your impeller and click OK to confirm your choice. Now enter your data in the pitched paddle input table. Click Help and you will find the most typical geometry relationship dimensions for this kind of agitator. Close the window and click OK. Average properties of media input table appears. Enter density. Select the type of media you're mixing, Newtonian or non-Newtonian. Click Enter and feed the viscosity for your media. You have thus entered all the basic initial data for your equipment and media and the diagram of your system corresponding to your input appears. At every stage in the life cycle of the process application, whether you are a chemist, design engineer or process and control engineer, Vizimix saves you time and makes your work more efficient and less error prone. In order to do it, click on one of the icons for Vessel, Impeller and Baffle and change the data for convenient editing. Other way to do it is by using the Edit menu. 
You may now proceed to calculations using the calculate option in Visimix. As you can see, there are many parameters that are available in Visimix to calculate. So which parameter is relevant for the project? Under the Visimix menu help, you can find which parameters are recommended to keep fixed for your specific application. As you can see by clicking Visimix, Help, Content, Selecting Equipment, Key Scaling Up Parameters for Different Unit Operations, you will find tables that describe the process, which parameter is important and where you can find this parameter. In this way, you are connecting now between the process, the hydrodynamics, and the results you have from the previous experience in the lab, previous manufacturing sites and pilot studies. For instance, modeling the dissolution of solid particles suspended in liquid. You can find in Table 4 the hydrodynamic parameters which are recommended to be fixed during the process. You can also determine the influence of various unit operation parameters on mixing effectiveness. Close the Help menu. According to the table in the Help menu, we can calculate various hydrodynamic parameters. To calculate the dissolution time, click on Calculate Liquid Solid Mass Transfer and Time of Complete Dissolution. Now to determine the dissolution time, Visimix will naturally require additional information on your solid particles and liquid phase as well as data on solubility and molecular diffusivity of the dissolved solid. First enter properties of solid and liquid phases, click OK. Then enter your data in the table Dissolution of Solid Particles. Let's suppose that molecular diffusivity is known to you. If so, enter this value in the appropriate box. If you do not know molecular diffusivity, enter 0 and molecular diffusivity will be evaluated by Visimix based on your input. You have now entered all the required data and the program is ready to start calculations. Click OK and a warning message appears. It informs you that in your tank you may not achieve the complete suspension of solid particles. Click OK and the table Time of Complete Dissolution appears. Estimated dissolution time is based on the average particle size. It is the time required for dissolving the major part of solid particles. Dissolution time for largest particles is the time for complete dissolution of all particles in the tank. Since Visimix altered you to the possible settling of the solid phase, you must now try to improve the mixing to ensure complete suspension. Let's check if changing some impeller parameters will help. Click on the impeller button in the upper bar, and the table with the impeller parameters you have previously entered appears. Increase tip diameter from 600 mm to, for instance, 680 mm and the number of blades from 2 to 4. Click OK and Visimix will repeat the calculations. These are the new values for time of complete dissolution. This time, no warning message has been issued. It means that in the improved variant, all solid particles are happily suspended in the solution. You can also see that the dissolution time has decreased. You have thus improved your design to ensure complete suspension and calculated the dissolution time in your tank. The change in the impeller tip diameter and number of blades proved to be favorable to your process. Now you may get additional information on your process. Click on last menu and check other parameters in liquid solid mass transfer. For example, Diameter of solid particle versus time. Click on Start to begin the simulation. You may also calculate other important parameters. For example, mixing power, macro mixing time, shaft vibration, and hundreds of others. Visimix application examples for other industrial processes, including blending, suspension, emulsification, heat transfer, chemical reactions, gas liquid mixing, and others, are found in the Visimix website. Now I invite you to view the next section of this tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to set up the relevant experiment at the lab scale to develop the process from an engineering point of view. 
As we've seen in the previous videos, Dr. Omixwell will be with us and assist me with the discussion and explanations. Let's get started! From the video Influence of Mixing in the Process, we're going to determine how to set up the lab equipment. Our purpose is to make relevant lab scale experiments in order to reproduce and analyze conditions in the production equipment. In this example, we can assume that the reagent feed position and impeller rotation velocity are two parameters that can be varied at the large scale in order to minimize formation of byproduct. We have finished our calculations and we found that the feed position close to the impeller with a high impeller rotation velocity helps to achieve our goal and to get good results. In order to confirm this conclusion, let's perform some evaluations in our lab equipment. We are going to use experiments to evaluate the influence of the reagent inlet feed position and the rotation velocity of the impeller on the purity of the reaction product. Then we will compare the obtained data with the results of calculations. A 2 liter glass reactor is an acceptable equipment choice to evaluate our reaction process. The reactor is loaded with 1.8 liter water and corresponding quantities of potassium iodide, potassium iodate and potassium acetate. The HCl is dripped into the reactor. The data on initial substances is entered into the Visimix as described in the previous video. In this example, we will get a qualitative response, change of color of mixture along the progress of reaction. Initially, to illustrate the performance of the reaction system, let's observe the reaction progress without any agitation. It is clear that without agitation, we observed a vast generation of the byproduct iodine, the red color, near the feed position, and throughout the reaction mixture. When the hydrochloric acid is fed to the upper part of the media and the impeller rotation velocity is low, we also observe the red color throughout the mixture and close to the feed position. We see a plum of the byproduct, iodine, generated close to the exit of the feed tube. Simultaneously, we can simulate formation of the byproduct using Visimix. When the fit position of the hydrochloric acid is close to the impeller, the iodine plum is not perceptible and the color of the reaction mixture is lighter. It can be seen that the concentration of the byproducts predicted by Visimix in this case is also much lower. Finally, by increasing the impeller rotation rate, we achieve practically complete absence of the red color. It indicates that the byproduct is practically absent. Visimix calculation results are in a good correspondence with these observations. And here are the conclusions of our experiments. The operation parameters for the production scale are predicted by Visimix according to the scale-down methodology. Visimix, in combination with lab experiments using the scale-down methodology, combines mixing physics with fundamental reaction mechanisms and can save experiment time, guide scale-up and troubleshoot limitation during the production. Macro-mixing time, reaction chemical rate and mean period of circulation can determine the optimal impeller rotation rate and the reagent feed position in the production step and to avoid lost batches and reduce the need to reproduce batches. Thank you for watching this tutorial. You're invited to see other process examples. 